Hey guys, what's going on? This is the Paramedic Coach back here with another video. Guys, if you're coming in right now and you were coming in live, guys, give me a hashtag Team Live down below in the comments. If you are coming in the replay, guys, give me a hashtag replay down below. You're probably wondering why that is. Now, the reason for that is I do not control Facebook, and my whole goal is to get this message out, this free training, to as many people as possible, okay? So the more people that comment, the more people that like on these videos, give me some likes, give me some hearts, the more people that share this video, the more people I can impact. So thank you for that. Give me a hashtag live or hashtag replay down below. And guys, I'm gonna welcome you to another live stream here on Facebook. So guys, what we're gonna be talking about tonight here is we're gonna be talking about respiratory emergencies, okay? Respiratory, okay? That has to do with the lungs, okay? We have two lungs. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about respiratory emergencies tonight. Now, what I can tell you, in my experience, is that respiratory emergencies are probably, I would say, in the top three of the most common calls that we get in EMS. I would say, for out without a doubt, everywhere that I worked, everywhere that I went, top three most common calls: respiratory difficulty breathing. Almost every shift you get a diff breather, I would say, to be fair, I would say. Um, if you're in a high, like I say, you're in a high call volume area or a city, I'd say every shift you make, you're probably, odds are, you're probably gonna get a diff breather. So you gotta know this cold. And the thing is, in EMS, we work so many different types of hours, days, evenings, nights. So we gotta have this down to a checklisted system. You could be answering a call, guys, at four in the morning, right? Emergencies aren't nine to five. Our job is not in an office nine to five, it's out on the streets. So let's dive into respiratory emergencies. Guys, again, like this video and comment down below. Guys, if you have questions, the more you engage, the more you can learn. So comment down below and if it helps Facebook, share this video. So let's dive into it. And guys, as usual, if you like my content, I really would appreciate it if you give it a share. Let's dive into it. So we're going to talk about respiratory emergencies and we're going to talk about sneaky patients, okay? So the thing is with respiratory emergencies, there are sneaky, sneaky patients we got to watch out for. So let's dive into some of the most common ones, okay? So let's do it. So if someone comes to us with difficulty breathing, okay? Let's say they come up with difficulty breathing. I'm gonna give you tonight a mnemonic, okay? A mnemonic that was passed on to me from a PA. His name is John Belinsky. It is the best mnemonic that I've ever seen in my career for difficulty breathing. And if you wanna know exactly what I do, like what I do, I got some from a PA. If you wanna know exactly what I do when I work up a difficulty breathing patient, I first wanna give this to you. And the reason I'm giving it to you as well is this reason. If you don't have a checklisted system, you're gonna get burned. And guys, stay to the end of this video. I got a big surprise at the end of the video, some big announcements for you guys. So stay to the end. This will impact you if you're an EMS, right? So let's talk about the mnemonic. So the mnemonic from John that he passed on to me is called HORID. H-O-R-I-D. It's misspelled H O. R I D. This is a gem. So here's the mnemonic. Anybody with pulmonary symptoms, anybody with difficulty breathing, don't make a horrid mistake and miss something. Like I told you, if you don't have a checklisted system, you're gonna get burned. Okay? So don't make a horrid mistake and miss something. You're going to a diff breather. You're sitting in the ambulance, you're difficulty breathing. Hey, let's not make a horrid mistake here and miss something. What's horrid? I'm gonna show you right now the mnemonic. Here it is. This is one of the best mnemonics I've ever, ever heard in my entire life, okay? And this is what I teach to all my students. And why? Because it's exactly what I use in the ambulance, okay? So the first H is heart, okay? And the other reason for this mnemonic is I can break down all the emergencies based upon the mnemonic, which is even, even better. So the first H is heart, okay? So heart, 
Okay, someone's difficulty breathing. I want you to comment down in the comment box below, okay? If you're here live or on the replay, either way. When I say difficulty breathing, and I say watch out for their heart, what do you think about? Comment down below, I'll give you a second. Comment down below. If you're watching on YouTube, comment down below. So difficulty breathing, heart, what's going on? What could it be? Okay? So there's two main things, okay, that we gotta watch out for, okay? Every patient, every time. The first one is gonna be ACS, acute coronary syndrome. That's a fancy word for saying they're having a heart attack, okay? So that's gonna be, I'm gonna spell it out, always simplest version. I'm always gonna give you the simplest version. They could be having a heart attack, okay? So heart, heart attack. Now in medical terminology, when you're talking to the nurse, talking to the doctor, talking to the PA, okay, talking to your other providers, it is called a myocardial infarction. Guys, real quick, Jim, it's good to know myocardial infarction. What does it mean? Well, here's how you remember it, okay? So myo, that M, well, what else starts with an M? Muscle, okay? So muscle, okay, Maya, okay, that works, MM, okay. Now what else, cardio, cardiac, okay. So maybe it means heart muscle, this is what your brain's thinking, right? Okay, all right, cool. So, okay, uh, infarction, okay? You just gotta know, guys, infarct is bad, okay? Does it, even, does it really sound good, infarct? Ooh, that sounds bad, okay? Kinda like with your sepsis, ooh, that sounds a little, oof, a little sly, sepsis, ooh, right? Sounds a little, oof, get away from that. Right? Just makes a feeling of that. That's the way to remember it, okay? Myocardial infarction is a heart attack. Acute coronary syndrome is, could be a heart attack. There's many things. But ACS is a part of a heart attack too, okay? So heart attack, also known as an ACS, also known as MI, okay? The other thing with heart we gotta watch out for is gonna be CHF. Remember our talk that we did. If you didn't, guys, if you did not download my cardiac blood flow and CHF lesson, it's on this page. Just scroll up and down after this live. There's two PDFs in this page. You have a PDF in this page, free download uh, for top 10 things to do before medic school. And also on this page is a cardiac blood flow PDF. Guys, check it out. It's right on this page, free. Hit the links down below. Just scroll up and down. You'll see the big posters for them. Uh, free downloads, okay? Now, CHF, we're gonna talk about heart failure. So difficulty breathing, well, remember, okay, remember, a quick reminder, CHF. Here's your heart, okay? Remember we went over this. We split it up, okay? Remember what we talked about. Here's the left ventricle. If the left ventricle becomes weak, blood backs up in CHF, blood backs up in CHF. So the blood's gonna back up in here. Now we're in the left atrium. What's right before the left atrium? Well, the left atrium is gonna get that blood from the lungs. Well, boom. Okay? All right? Okay, good guys. So that's gonna be our CHF. Now, next O for obstruction. Obstruction. So if I'm not fully breathing, I say obstruction. What do you think about? Could be a foreign body airway, right? That could be it. Well, the other thing I think about with, with obstruction too is it also could be some sort of tightening of my, of my upper airway. So it could be like, a, like a, for example, like a strider or something like that, right? So think obstruction. So, okay, difficulty breathing. I don't wanna make a horror mistake and miss something. Check their heart. If I'm a paramedic, Difficulty breathing, I'm not even thinking about it. I don't need to hear chest pain. I don't gotta hear they're old. Difficulty breathing, okay. 12 weight EKG. Difficulty breathing, heart, 12 weight EKG. Okay, got it. What else am I gonna do? CHF, lung sounds, baby. Gotta listen to lung sounds. CHF has rails bilaterally. Bilaterally, both sides, okay? Okay, got it. Obstruction, are they choking? Is it strider, upper airway? This is the golden gem right here. So you never get burned, reactive. Actually, I lied, this one's even better. I lied to you. <laughs> reactive, okay? 
This is actually the best one, the last one. The last one is gonna literally save people's lives. Guys, and I'm telling you, I share this with paramedic students and EMTs. This is the best mnemonic I've ever heard in my entire life and I'm sharing with you right now. And we're gonna break everything down as we go along, okay? Based on this beautiful mnemonic from John, okay? Now, reactive. When you think of reactive, I want you to think of three things, okay? First, I want you to think of anaphylaxis. Because anaphylaxis, reactive airway, I want you to think of wheezing. So bronco, bronco has to do with the lungs, constriction, like a cobra, constricts its meal. So bronchoconstriction. So we got here anaphylaxis. By the way, what is anaphylaxis? Real quick. If I have an allergic reaction, okay, let's say I was having an allergic reaction to this pen, okay, and I get hives, is that anaphylaxis? No. That is allergic reaction. Do I need to go to the ER for that? Probably not. Okay? I, and I'm saying probably not because everyone's different. Okay? I'm not on the call on that call. Now, how do I transport people to the ER with allergic reaction? Yes. Okay? But it's only one body system. Okay? Now, if I have anaphylaxis, it's two or more body systems. My skin is, is a body system. My GI is a body system. My, my lungs are a body system. My, heart's a, my heart is a, also a body system, okay? So if I have wheezing and nausea, anaphylaxis. I'm not in shock, I'm in anaphylaxis. Shock, now I start going hypotensive. Now I start being unstable, okay? Anaphylaxis, I'm still compensating, I'm still around, okay? Anaphylaxis, could be hives, wheezing. Hives, nausea is anaphylaxis. Don't get burned, okay? This is huge. Hives and vomiting is anaphylaxis, guys. Okay? So there we go. Next, asthma and COPD. If I can do spell it right. Okay? So we got anaphylaxis, we have asthma, and we have COPD. I'm going to put it right here, actually. COPD. Okay? I don't want to confuse you. I'm going to keep it simple for you guys. I want to keep everything nice and spread out. So we got anaphylaxis, asthma, COPD. Let's start there, okay? So asthma, what's asthma? Well, asthma is a chronic problem that causes bronco, the lungs, constriction, like that cobra eating its meal, constriction, okay? And it happens a lot, happens chronically. Happens throughout your time, okay? It's a hypersensitivity and you, you tighten up. It sucks. You gotta carry an inhaler, okay? Asthma patients are seen so often in the ambulance, guys. Asthma patients are so often in the ambulance. So often. Now guys, if you have ever had an asthma attack or you've ever been in a call with one, comment down below. Give me a yes. Give me a yes I've been in an asthma call or you've known someone who had asthma, comment yes down below. If you wanna tell a story, go for it. Okay, if you have some experience, maybe you have asthma, comment down below, okay? Have you ever seen an asthma attack? Comment down below, okay? Now COPD is a chronic disease. COPD, I'm not gonna draw it out here, but I will tell you, okay? COPD is brought up into two parts, okay? It's a chronic disease. Just remember that, it's a chronic disease, usually in older people. Now, COPD, guys, is basically brought up into two different diseases, chronic bronchitis and emphysema. COPD is brought up in two diseases, chronic bronchitis and emphysema. What's the difference? So easy, guys. You see, if you know the medical terminology, medicine is so damn easy. Chronic, it lasts a long time, okay? Bronchitis, the bronchioles, the bronchi in the lungs, okay? Itis, so chronic bronchitis. Itis is inflammation of what I'm talking about. So it's a chronic inflammation of the bronchioles. If I have chronic inflammation of the bronchioles, they're gonna get a little tight, they're gonna hypersecrete, and I'm gonna need to open them up. Bam, COPD. Now what about emphysema? Whoa, what the hell is emphysema? It's totally different. 
emphysema. Oh, why is that? It's totally different. Emphysema has to do with the alveoli. Okay? Now, if you didn't go through a full class to understand, just let's keep it simple here. The, we have our upper airways. We go down to the lungs. We have bronchi, like main, like if, like if you think of a bigger pathway, a pipe. And the lower pathways, the bronchioles, lower. At the base, where gas exchange occurs, where oxygen, okay, watch, watch. Okay, I'm gonna bring oxygen in. Carbon dioxide goes out. At the bottom of my lungs is gas exchange. It goes right there. Capillaries are down there too, hanging out, okay? The alveoli, this is where people that smoke get in trouble. When you smoke, your alveoli is literally becoming dis disformed, disformed, okay? So think of your alveoli as like a, let's say you had like a, like a, a styrofoam cup and you just got it out of the box and you put, and you put one drink in it. You have a drink, it's fine, right? Those like white styrofoam cups. If you keep drinking out of that for like, for a long time, the bottom of the cup gets all warped. That's like a smoker who smokes every day. The alveoli, the bottom of the alveoli has structural changes and it gets messed up. That's a huge problem. It's a terrible diagnosis and it's very common in smokers or people that work in a hazardous environment, like in Navy shipyards, okay? So that is COPD, okay? Guys, does all this make sense? Guys, comment down below, give me a yes or okay, a thumbs up, give me a thank you, so, just something that I know, uh, uh, perfect, whatever you like, just something down below in the comments so I can know, I got my screen over here so I can see everything going on, hey guys. So uh, comment down below, all right? Next we're gonna do talk about is uh, infection. Now this is a big one. So in a normal world, in a normal circumstance, when I'm gonna talk about infection, I'm thinking about flu and pneumonia. In a normal circumstance. Now obviously with this COVID-19 stuff, we're thinking about COVID-19 obviously. So special, special circumstance. Okay, so eyes for infection. How do people present? Well, we have pneumonia, okay? So all these things are gonna have some sort of fever and they're gonna have an infection. Infection causes hot or, is it hot skin or cold skin? Hot, hot skin, hot skin, okay? Hot skin, they're gonna have fever, okay? And they're gonna have essentially junk in their lungs. They're going to be coming, you're spitting up green and yellow sputum, okay? Pneumonia, flu, COVID, okay? Again, when I normally teach this, this wouldn't be here. But you always got to think about infection. And either way, whether it's flu, pneumonia, whatever it may be, you still want to have a precaution, either way. If someone gets in your ambulance and like, oh, they have the flu, uh, you're going to wear an N95 mask, either way. Okay, so it's not like, oh, it's not COVID-19. Like, no, either way, I'm, it's an infection, and I'm gonna protect myself. TB, right? Now that, it's a little different, but think about that. Any infection, okay? Now, the big one here, I'm just gonna move this out the way. And just, to, I'm gonna put it over here, guys. The main thing here is pneumonia. Pneumonia and, got it? Flu. They're hot and they got junk. Okay, this is the, the final one for this mnemonic. Okay, now we're gonna go with just some medications and how to treat some of these things, okay? Now, guys, this last mnemonic right here, I can't be more serious about this. This is our number one duty as EMTs and medics. Right now, if you're watching this, this final piece could literally save your butt and save a patient's life. Um, I'm that serious about it, okay? I've seen them miss before, okay? Here it is, death. Okay, what if we miss it in emergency medicine can cause a patient to die like this? 
I'm going to tell you right now. Ready? Pulmonary embolism and pneumothorax. Tension pneumothorax, pulmonary embolism. Let's talk about it. So one is going to be a medical, so think one's medical, one's trauma. Okay? To make it simple. Now let's talk first about pneumothorax. Okay? So pneumothorax. We have a simple pneumothorax and we have a tension pneumothorax. A simple pneumothorax is trending as it gets worse towards a tension pneumothorax. Now what is this? Let me explain. So basically what's happening inside pneumothorax is you're literally having a lung being collapsed. So inside the space of the lungs, air is pulling up and it is literally collapsing the lung into nothing, okay? So there's, so there's a little lining of space where the lungs are, the pole space. That space is getting expanded with air. Very commonly can happen in a gunshot wound victim where air is going into that space and and it's really, you're literally moving the heart and you're collapsing the lung and the heart is being literally strained. That's a tension pneumothorax. The way we fix that, obviously, is by putting a needle in their chest and letting the air actually dispel out, okay? Now, if you're BLS, we do something called a three-sider. I get shot here, okay? You can see there's a sucking chest wound, blood coming out like this, okay? It's like, it's gonna look like this, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a, a bandage and you're gonna put it right here. Guys, you're gonna, you're gonna laugh at this. You guys are gonna laugh at this. This is so serious, guys, that I would actually carry. You guys are gonna laugh at me. You guys are gonna laugh at me. It's, it's not sterile at all, but I used to do it. Um, ready for it? Okay, here it is. So I used to carry an N95 mask right in my pant pocket here. I had my shears right here. Okay, N95, my shears right here. Then inside, right inside that same pocket, I have my meal decompression needle I carry. And then right in there, I actually would carry a piece of plastic and tape. That's how serious it was about pneumothorax. And that piece of plastic was not, literally, wasn't even sterile. I just all, and just in case we got into some crazy, literally like shit show, I would carry that with tape in there so I know I could save a life with those two things. That's how serious this is, okay? So you, what you do is, if you found someone in the street, lay person, you get a piece of plastic, you put the plastic there and you do a three-sider. Tape, tape, tape. So it has a valve, okay? That's how you do it. We call it a three-sider, okay? And that's how you do it, all right? So pneumothorax, the way it's gonna present pneumothorax, the way it gets worse, they're gonna be very, very hypotensive, okay? And they're gonna have unequal lung sounds. So here they're not gonna have any sounds, because think about it, the lungs collapsing, how are you gonna hear any sounds, right? Think about it, if I have two lungs that are open and closed, open and closed, clear, clear. If this lung's collapsing and there's just dead space over here, I'm not gonna hear anything, it's common sense, right? But I'm gonna hear something over here, right? You're gonna, you could see different movements, and the thing is you're gonna see big uh, GVD here, okay? So you're gonna see a big vein here filled up, okay? There you go. PE, the, the, the mother of them all. All right, uh, so PE. So PE, guys, we're gonna talk about on this call right here, and PE's got a few different things. So we talked about pulmonary embolism. I'm gonna give you some, some advanced stuff here, okay? So a little advanced stuff here. Are you ready for it? Okay, I'm gonna give it to you. So PE, it's got a few things. We're gonna talk about vitals, risk factors, exams, Okay, so first we're going to talk about vitals. Okay, I want you to see all this, okay? So the first thing we're going to talk about here, guys, is going to be the vitals, okay? The vitals of a PE is going to be hypoxic and tachycardic, okay? They either have big PEs or they're going to have small PEs. Let me explain. Back to our heart lesson from yesterday. Remember here. IVC, SVC. Guys, if you have no idea what I'm talking about here, you have to go to my page right now. And you, do, you, do you see, what, do you notice a trend here? Do you notice how all this connects back to knowing heart blood flow? 
Do you notice that? You, if you have no idea what's going on here, it's heart blood flow. You have to go watch the heart blood flow video. You will have to. EMT's mix, you gotta watch it. I gave you a download file. You can download the video, sit with your classmates, share it, watch it on a Zoom call. I, it's free download, it's on me, free download. You can share it wherever you want, do whatever you want with it. It's a download file on my page. You'll see a red poster, go download it. Now, remember, if I have a DVT, okay, if I have a DVT, and right here in my calf, how do I know I have a DVT? What the hell is a DVT? Let me explain. So a DVT, guys, what that is, is a deep vein thrombosis. Let's dive into it. Deep, we know, so deep veins are deep in my leg. Okay, it's not right here, it's in there. You can't really see it, okay? A vein, we know what the vein is now. Veins are to return blood back to the heart. So the blood flow is going this way. So it's going up my leg this way, okay? And then we're gonna have thrombosis. Well, we gotta know what that is. Now you're gonna know. It's got thromb a thrombosis is a, is a piece of a clot, okay? So now we have a deep vein that's blocked. It's gonna bulge your leg out. It's gonna bulge your calf out. Redness, swelling. It's gonna look like it's infected. Kinda is, in a way, if you think about it, okay? A little piece of that puppy, that little clot, can then go up the venous system, which we know goes back to the heart. So now, think about it. My leg's down here, okay? My foot's here, my leg's down here. Uh, it's gonna travel, that, that piece of, uh, th uh, little piece of clot. Veins go back to the heart. Well, obviously, eventually, from that deep vein, it's got to go to the IVC eventually. It needs more oxygen, right? Okay. So now, is it going to come right up here to the IVC? It's going to go right through here. Right, the clot's going to go right into the right atrium now. Because we know our heart blood flow. Now, where is it going to go next? It's going to go into the right ventricle. What, what did I tell you the other day about cardiac blood flow? What makes the right ventricle happy? What is the right ventricle's purpose on this earth? It's to get oxygen for the body. That's, that's what it loves to do. So it connects the pulmonary artery to go get oxygen, which in this case is not good because the clot, here's your pulmonary artery right here, clot to go right in the pulmonary artery and stick right there, and now you have a lung attack. You have a lung attack, okay? That's a pulmonary embolism. Gosh, I cannot tell you how many EMT students, and I'm gonna say even to AMT and MEG students, literally struggle with this. And by the way, when I was in EMT school, I struggled with it too, okay? Here it is. Guys, a PE, now you know what it is. A PE has nothing to do with the lung fields. It's gotta do with the blood supply to the lungs. Okay, it's got nothing to do, nothing to do at all. Okay, it's got nothing to do at all with the bronchioles. It's got nothing to do with it. It's not wheezing, it's not rails, it's not bronchi. Why would it be? It's in the bloodstream. So think about it. Okay, you're blocking this up. This is how the lungs, this is how everything happens, guys. It's a lung attack. A heart attack is a blood clot in the heart. A lung attack is a blood clot in the lungs. Okay? You follow me? A lung attack is a pulmonary embolism, and nobody talks about it. Okay? This is the most sneakiest thing you can find in medicine. Okay? Now, why is it sneaky? Pulmonary embolism presents with clear, clear lung sounds, hypoxia, and tachycardia. So you're sitting there like, what the hell could this be? They got, okay, they got chest pain. They got chest pain. They got clear lung sounds. Tachycardia hypoxia. Can I help you? Let me help you. That's just the vitals. But what about risk factors and exams? When we went over exams, they're gonna have a swollen, oops, they're gonna have a swollen uh, leg. 
There's your exam. Can I give you a pearl? Every single difficulty breathing patient get, the, get a leg exam and put it on your chart. Because if you don't document a leg exam and you bring someone to the ER with a PE, on the chart, it's going to look like you didn't even look for PE. So please, please hear me on this, guys. Every patient with difficulty breathing, you document a leg exam. Say, I looked at the left leg, I looked at the right leg, there were no signs of DVT, there was no swelling. That's what you got to write on your chart, okay? Every difficulty breathing patient is a leg exam. Think about it. CHF, you also should do a leg exam because of the edema. So any difficulty breathing, check their legs, okay? It's going to help you. Now, what about the risk factors? This is going to help you. I'm going to give you literally a question that happens on every single national registry test. Here it is. For every, everybody, by the way. Okay, so here it is. You have a patient. This is PE. You have a patient that just got off a long plane or train ride. It could be a bus ride, a plane ride, or a train ride. Okay, they're a smoker and they're on birth control. And they just got off a long plane ride. They have a swollen leg, they're tachycardic and hypoxic. What's wrong with the patient? P. So think about it. <coughs> if I'm on bed rest, excuse me, if I'm on bed rest for a long time, I'm not moving, I'm gonna be in stasis, I'm gonna be at rest, right? So if I'm, if I'm not moving, I'm more at risk of a clot because I'm sedentary, okay? That's why it's more risk factor. Another risk factor of PE is birth control. Anything that gets you in a hypercoagulable state, like a high action state, birth control, cancer, cancer medication, stuff like that can cause these things, okay? Just giving you some pearls here, all right? The other thing I, can, other thing I watch out for to PE, I told you I'm getting a little advanced here with some of these things, uh, is uh, surgery. Anyone that just got out of a surgery or a vascular or surgery, PE. That right there might just save someone's life, your career, and the patient's life, which is very important, okay? Now this, you know, after going through this whole thing here, okay? I went through this whole thing here. Think about it. If it's not one of these things, okay, and by the way, Heart, you're doing a 12 week. So someone is probably sitting here going, they're at medic school. Evan, Evan, pericarditis, Evan. What about pericarditis? What about cardiac tamponade? Brother, you're gonna do a 12 week. So you're gonna pick up on your pericarditis or, or cardiac tamponade, right? So if it's not one of these things here, are we really, to, are, are we really that worried about it? Does it basically just turn to routine ALS? which is IV, 12 lead, monitor, sugar, and transport. Yeah, yep, yep, pretty much, pretty much, yep. Okay, pretty cool. So what I wanna do now is I just wanna go through some of the common meds that we see in respiratory emergencies real quick. And I just wanna go through the common meds, okay? Let me see who we got live here, guys, real quick. Let me see who we got live here. So we got about 14 people live. Guys, I want, if you love this content, guys, please share this video. That's all I can ask you guys, guys. Please share this video. Um, my mission is very simple. If you're, ever, if you're wondering why I'm doing all this, my mission is very simple. I believe that if you want to serve your community, if you want to become an EMT, if you want to become a paramedic, you should be able to pass your boards. You should be able to do that, okay? I believe that in life, if you want to do something, you should be able to do it, right? Me right now, this is what I love to do, and I get to do it every day, right? So I got my National Registry Paramedic. I want to do the same thing for you guys, okay? So this is my goal. I want to give back to you guys. Guys, if you like this video, like, comment down below any questions, anything that you like to say, comment down below. If you're live, give me a hashtag live. If you're on the replay, hashtag replay, and stay tuned to the end so I got some really, really cool coming for you guys, okay? So here we go. I don't, I don't know why I do that. This is my own show. I could swear on it, but I don't know. I, I don't feel like it, I guess. Why not? So I got a surprise at the end, so stay tuned for that. I got two surprises, okay? Now let's talk about some meds. <clears throat> Let me get a little water here, guys. So hang on one second. Let's get a little water. So guys, comment down below. Guys, comment down below. 
uh, while I'm drinking some water here, comment down below. When you think of respiratory meds, what do you think about? Comment down below. When you think of respiratory meds, give me some meds you think about, okay? Let's write them down. You think of a patient, difficulty breathing, what do you give them? Just let's start there, okay? All right, let's do it. So we got here albuterol, okay, hypertrophium. Now I'm not, I am not gonna spell this right, guaranteed. So I'm gonna put IP, it's gonna be close. If I spelled it right, man, I'd be happy. It's, it's a little wrong, but pretty close. We'll take it. <laughs> All right, what else are we gonna do here? now? What other meds? I'm gonna give you a med. Nitro. Nitro? Isn't that for heart attacks? We're gonna go over it, don't worry. So let's start with these meds. Let's do Epi. Epi is a good one. Nitro, hypotropium, albuterol. Alright, let's start with these guys. So let's go with albuterol. And we're gonna go one by one. And we're gonna say what they treat what they treat and why they treat it. Pretty cool, let's do it. So first we get albuterol. So albuterol is gonna be for people that have asthma. Now, who else gets albuterol? Comment down below, who else gets albuterol? So asthma does, who else? Comment down below. Asthma, who else? If you're on YouTube, comment down below. Facebook, comment down below. All right, albuterol is gonna be asthma. It's going to be COPD. It's going to be anaphylaxis. Notice something very curious here. This is reactive airway. So when you think of albuterol, you think of bronchoconstriction. It's the R in horrid, okay? So, Albuterol, what does it do? It acts on the beta 2 receptor. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go into a full receptor talk. I, I have done this before, and I will probably do it again. Okay, it's because it's one of the most core things in EMS. Okay. The beta 2 receptor, we have two lungs. There's a beta-1 receptor, it's got to do with the heart, we have one heart. So beta-2 receptors, we have two lungs. So albuterol acts on the beta-2 receptor, because we have two lungs, and it opens up the lungs. Bronchodilation, bronchodilatation, opens up the lungs. So bronchoconstriction, bronchodilatation, okay? Bronco, lungs, bronchi, bronchioles, lungs, dilatate, Constrict. Fair? Okay, give me some likes, guys, give me some hearts. That makes sense, okay? Now, the next thing we're going to talk about here is hypotropium. What does that do? Have you ever heard of a duoneb? Guys, have you heard of, have you heard of the word duoneb? Comment down below, yes, give me a yes or a thumbs up or, you know, yes, I have heard of duoneb or yep. Comment down below, duoneb, duoneb. So a duoneb combines this albuterol with the hypertropium. Why is that? Why? Why? Why not just do albuterol? Why would you do both? Can I, can I share with you one? Here it is. So I'm not here to judge why. I'm here to just tell you and you have to make the clinical decision for yourself what you want to do. Here it is. Hypertrophium is going to dry up secretions. It's going to dry up secretions. This is a, this is a pearl. Give me a hashtag pearl because this is a pearl. I remember the first time I heard this, was in paramedic school, had a great paramedic instructor in paramedic school. I would say probably one of the best in the country. And he taught me this right here, I'm gonna share it with you, okay? So, dry up secretions, okay? 
Think about this. I'm having asthma. Okay? I'm going to open up the lung fields with albuterol. Okay? Right. Now, if I do hypertrophium, I'm going to dry up secretions. Okay. What if I get it wrong and it's pneumonia? I just dried up and made infection harder and stickier and more stuck in so they can't mobilize it and cough it out. So do you think we should give hypertrophium to pneumonia patients? No, we probably shouldn't. It's your decision because you're not going to get, you're not going to, if you give someone with pneumonia a duoneb, you're not going to lose your license. You're not going to, you know, go to jail. Okay. You're not going to think crazy. Okay. But I want you to think about that. There's no right or wrong, and in all the protocol I've ever seen, I never saw it ever say, watch out for pneumonia. I'm sharing it with you because I know what it does. Fair? Okay. Nitroglycerin is very simple. Well, nitroglycerin is going to decrease preload in the heart. Now, preload is the amount of blood returning back to the heart. Okay? Fair? So, think about it. If my lungs, my lungs... I'm going to draw out a box here of lungs. If my lungs are filling up with fluid, right, I might want to give nitro to someone in CHF because it's going to decrease the amount of blood going into the system, which is backing up in here. Okay? Does that make sense? So then I can give the lungs a chance to flush out, get up, put it back where it belongs, right? Because in CHF, your blood pressure is like, 200 over 100. So you, you, got, you got blood just rushing in here, rushing in here. So if I can, if I can open, if I can think about it, if I, if I can open, if I, if I can relax it, I can relax the amount of pressure going into here. Okay? There's nitro. Now I'm going to uh, just do a quick epi, okay? There we go. And don't forget, guys, stay at the end. I got two big surprises for you, okay? Uh, if you're watching right now and, you, and you're inside the membership of the Paramedic Coach, this is going to be very impactful for you to stay to the end, too. And, guys, shout out to all my members out there, the Paramedic Coach guys. Shout out to you guys. If you're watching live, guys, shout out to you guys. Um, Give us do some big announcements. We got two more at the end. Guys, by the way, if you just meet me, my name's Evan. I'm the Paramedic Coach. I'm here on Facebook, and I also have a YouTube channel as well. Guys, if you love these videos, okay, I can only do a video a day, right? I'm not always around, okay? If you really, really want to have more videos and you want to learn more, okay, and you want to be a sharp EMT, you want to impress your peers, you want to impress your partners, hell, you want to pass school on easy mode, I have a course. It's up above... Okay, right in my cover photo. You can click my profile photo or my cover photo, that big photo on, on my page. Okay? It says on there, pass school on easy mode. In my profile photo with my face, click there, or my cover photo. I have a video library of over a hundred videos from the basics of EMS to the most advanced stuff for paramedic school, to prep for medic school, to prep for EMT school and everything in between. The course will find you wherever you are. So if you want me in your pocket, literally in your pocket, you want Evan, paramedic, on demand with you, grab the course, it's up in the color photo. Guys, the course sells for only $49 for access to my best 100 videos of tips and pearls to help you pass school and out on the road. So go ahead in the color photo, click that, get access now. I would suggest that you do get access now because of this. We're going to be making some big, big changes. I'm not sure how long I'm going to keep the price at $49. And I'm going to explain one of the things I'm adding to the course at the end of this live. And I also have another announcement as well. I'm doing something very special for you guys. So stay tuned to the end. Let's tackle our epi. All right, let's do it. So let's do epi, okay? So let's tackle our epi. So epi is our last little drug here we're going to go over on, on, for this uh, call, okay? So here's epi. So epi, what epi is going to do, guys, one of the things epi does is going to act on the beta-2 receptor because we have two lungs. 
okay? So if I have an asthma attack or I'm in anaphylaxis, those are the two places we're going to use our epi in difficulty breathing, okay? So epi acts on the beta 2 receptor, okay? So when I act in the beta 2 receptor, remember we have two lungs, okay? Beta 2, two lungs. When it acts on that, it's going to bronchodilate, open up the lungs. That's why we give epi to asthma patients. Asthma, I'm tight, open up. Now we only give it some severe asthma. More mild asthma will get a nebulizer, okay? Maybe some steroids at hospital, okay? Same with COPD. Severe, like they're gonna die, then we gotta give a shot of epi, 0 0.3 milligrams in the arm, okay? Could you give it in the leg? I mean, you could, could. Um, I usually just give it in the arm. It's going to go in either way. It's muscle, but I usually give it in the arm. Okay. Um, so that's that. And yeah, that's pretty much it for, uh, for epinephrine there. So guys, as a quick uh, wrap up, let's get right into the uh, surprises here. Let's do it, right? All right, cool, cool. Guys, give me some hearts. Give me some likes. Um, give me a hashtag live if you're still live with me. If you made it to the end of this video, which is coming up soon, give me a hashtag end, E-N-D. Uh, I, get, I want some feedback from you guys. The more feedback I get from you guys, the more comments, the more you know, information I get to, about making these videos. So comment as much as you can. Let me know what you're thinking. Um, that way I can make the most impactful videos I can for you guys, okay? And by the way, if I didn't tell you guys, you guys are awesome because this is what I love to do. I mean, you can see my energy. You're probably thinking that I'm on caffeine right now. I'm not. I don't even drink coffee. Um, this is what I love to do. This gets me excited every day to wake up and do this. So I thank you guys for watching. Okay. Uh, now let's, let's do uh, our surprise. So number one and number two. Ready? Here we go. So number one is I'm holding a giveaway. Okay. I'm holding a giveaway. All right. I'm holding a giveaway. Okay. So I, my YouTube channel right now, my YouTube channel right now is so darn close to 3,000 subs. And I promised a lot of my subscribers over on YouTube that once I hit 3,000 subs on YouTube at The Paramedic Coach on YouTube, you can look it up, The Paramedic Coach, subscribe, I would hold a giveaway. So we're so darn close. We gotta be, I think now, maybe 40 or 50 people away. If you have not subscribed yet, if you're a subscriber on YouTube, you'll get access to this giveaway. So go to YouTube, subscribe. I'm giving away a Litman Cardiology four okay now right here i have my scope this is my scope i got the litman cardiology three it served me for a really long time here so i'm going to be giving away a litman cardiology four it's the three so you got a better scope than i do okay a newer one than i do it's brand new just ordered it. it's coming in the mail okay so i'm going to be giving that away guys and i'm going to be doing a lot of cool giveaways and stuff so the more you watch my content the more you subscribe the more you take action the better chance you will i'll have the contest rules so one, you know, I have one scope, so one lucky winner will win. I will have the contest rules once the scope comes in the mail and once I hit my 3,000 subs. So I promise my subscribers, okay? Now, number two is going to be the Paramedic Coach course, okay? Now, the Paramedic Coach course, like I talked to you about, is right in the link in, the, in my cover photo and my profile photo. Now, this course right now, I have over 100 videos of content from EMT school, AMT, paramedic school, okay? It's all broken down into steps. Step one, step two, step one, step two. I go over EMS medications there, like in the jump bag, and I go over prescription medications, and I give you career tips. My best content I put there, it's like my little like archive, or like a little gold mine. It's a paramedic coach. All my best tips, okay? So this, this right now, it's been for a very long time, it sells for only $49. Okay, it's $49 for the paramedic coach course. Now, I'm gonna be adding into the course a ton of cool stuff. Now, I'm gonna be adding in, and it should be live tomorrow. Yeah, if you're one of the members or you're in the course already, then you're gonna get access to this first, okay? So, anyone that opts in, who's already been in, or anyone new, will get access to this. There's no char no extra charge. Okay, but you gotta get in on this to get access. Here's what it is. So the biggest thing is, you know, doing all this teaching, doing all these, these live calls, guys, I get a ton of messages and I try to answer 
as many as I can, many as I can, many as I can. I try to answer as many as I can. But between the YouTube, the Facebook page, Paramedic Coach, and Evan Paramedic Facebook, I have three different messengers. I also have my email, I have the website, I have so many messages coming to me. It's very hard for me to answer all the questions. So I thought about it and said, how can I give back to you? How can I get closer to you to answer your questions and really help you out? Because I don't want to be on Messenger just going back and forth with you. I want to really impact you and really help you. So here's my thought. Here's what we're doing. If you become a member of the Paramedic Coach, Paramedic Coach I'm going to have a private Facebook group for members only. It's a private Facebook group inside the course. Okay? Well, you're going to have access to me whenever you need me inside the private Facebook group. So my goal with adding in this new private Facebook group to the paramedic coach, my goal with that is for, if you have any questions, like one-on-one -on -one access to me, you can just jump, dump, like brain dump, brain dump your questions in here. And I will be right there for you, okay, almost like immediate access, okay, to answer your questions, like as fast as I can get there, okay? You know, I have to eat, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so as fast as I can, okay? And I will answer your question the best that I can for you in here. So again, imagine having my best materials, okay, my best tips, my best advice, plus the community, the community, of all the people that are also driven inside this course and having the access to me inside this Facebook group. And it's a one-time fee of only $49. So that is pretty cool. Now, anybody that's already in the Paramedic Coach, guys, you're getting this. Any new members, you're getting this. And no extra charge. This is the best way that I can give you that one-on-one -on -one feedback. And guys, there's going to be way more cool stuff coming. Guys, this is just the beginning. The giveaway, the private Facebook group, the course. Guys, I have so much stuff planned for you guys. I want to change the education industry with EMS, and I want to help you. Okay, I remember being in EMT school. Guys, my first semester of EMT school, I literally almost failed out. Because I didn't have a mentor, I didn't have a coach. And I almost failed. But I buckled down, and I was able to get by. And my goal here is I don't want anybody, I don't want anybody that wants to serve their community as an EMT or medic to miss out. So this right here is the best way that I can serve you. Guys, I will see you in the next live. I will see you tomorrow. If you don't know, I'm doing a 30-day challenge where I'm going live every single day. And to be honest, I'm having so much fun. Screw a 30-day challenge. Let's keep this thing rolling, yeah? All right, guys, I'll see you uh, tomorrow with some new things. Like, comment, share. If you love this content, love you guys. See you tomorrow.